Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nave. Uh, we're doing Live at Berkeley 82. There's another three of these still to go after this one. Pity me, because there's, <laughs> there's not that much variation as there was before, but we're getting there. The, I mean, there's also, it doesn't have the band mythology, although there was the wobbly stuff that happened with Beat. Obviously, they were just getting on with it as professionals. So there's no none of those stories to tell, you know. A um, bit more lo-fi, I think, than the previous one. The previous two, I don't know why, maybe the venue or something or something. Obviously a, a muso town, a very big muso town, major muso town. Actually two versions of this, interestingly. This was the second 82 show on the Collectors Club, although technically the third 82 show we'd heard. We've got the Captor Agd, still to come, Agd. And also the, the Fraser's show, which was after that as well, on the DVD. So it was, it was a big deal, but something interesting happened where uh, when they... I think when they reset the Collectors Club to you just order it when you want it rather than having to have a subscription for a year, they said they, they were going to give away a free downloadable remaster of um, the Berkeley show, which is nice. It's two discs actually, I've got two CDRs here of the download, so that's good. And it, the sound is a bit better, so the, I think the low fineness comes from this original CD, but I don't know what that is. But yeah, the Collectors Club was £78 a year for six CDs a year, it's supposed to be every two months. It was. That was just so awesome when that came out, and I, and I could only afford it because I was that was a student um, a year after it started. So I had to back order first six and then probably the next lot as well, which was oh my god, that was a parcel. <laughs> that was just wonderful. It was so exciting. It took ages though for this download to come out. It did eventually. So it was strange that that was announced, and I don't understand. The I didn't know what happened there. I don't know the logistics of it or whatever. So yeah, live in Berkeley. Uh, track one, Waiting Man, always good, obviously, it's a great opener. It's all very trebly. Um, all the 80s stuff is trebly, obviously, it's, except for discipline, because it's the 80s. But this one more so, this is more trebly, it's more 80s. There you go. Track two is Thelo and Jinjit. They play the original tape. I don't think that was played before. Adrian Blue used to sort of shout out what was happening kind of thing, but then this, this time they, they, they play the, the tape now, which, which on the one hand it's cool that he shouts it out, but on the other hand it fits the song and it's, that's what the song is with that tape playing obviously. Nice and tense, Adrian Blue really letting rip with the vocals, it's great. Uh, track three is red, uh, more intense than before, it's starting to get really going. Adrian Blue started doing these really intense fills, kind of ridiculous doing it on an acoustic guitar, but you know. On the... Uh, he'll go... Well, you know, wild stuff, tapping and... and and of course the thing is, once you get used to him doing that, it sounds empty without them. And so the album version sounds kind of empty without all that, that, those histronics over the top. I wonder here if Fripp's doing some. Maybe, maybe not, not sure. Sometimes you can't tell when Baloo's kind of doing a Fripp impression. Uh, track four, The Howler. This is the last one. Like I said, I never really liked it, don't know why. You know, so far it's only been Happy Family and The Howler. Maybe just two 80s, it's very 80s, that song. I don't like the melody. Uh, track five is Frame by Frame. Unfortunately, Fripp is so low in the mix. Uh, you can't really hear the sliding in time, which is a shame, but it's, it's a good version. Uh, track six is Mataku Desai, which is always good. Uh, track seven, Sheltering Sky. Not as good as previous, uh, but it's always good Sheltering Sky. It, doesn't, it never goes wrong, obviously, because it's very, very straightforward and it's, it is what it is, and you know, you can always enjoy that one. Uh, not as long either, so maybe there was a peak somewhere in, in between. <laughs> track eight, Discipline. Uh, obviously always much the same. There's no room for manoeuvre with the guitars. And the rhythm section are in a supporting role, so there's less to, to change, even even than Fracture. Fracture has an improvised section, actually, so, you know, whereas Discipline can't really do that. It, all they can do is change the tempo. So there it is. Track nine is Neil and Jack and Me. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> this is a fast version, just to make things even harder to play. Now, live, Bill does, does the, the fast snare thing, the um, which is on the album version. That makes a big difference to the intensity of it. I like it, because I like it, it makes it more intense. It also makes it more off-kilter because it's it's kind of not quite in sync with the, the, the interlocking guitars for some reason. I don't really like that. Uh, track 10, Neurotic, oh yes. Vocals might be better, maybe. Mm. Track 11 is Elephant Talk, really noisy, but that might be too, due to the same quality. And track 12 is Indiscipline. The drum solo is really great, it's very melodic, quite a long one. And still with one drummer. It wasn't until the next tour where it was, where it was the two of them playing it. That's live in Berkeley 82, see you next week.